Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Monday Night America here. Thank you, one and all. We are all over the place, folks. We're on the NDB Media Network. We're on YouTube, Facebook. We're on Twitch. We're, of course, on my public page. And we, of course, are on the Facebook page of Alt Tower Media. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Of course, I'm your host. I go by Palpatine, go by Roger, go by many other things. But want to thank you. i going to tell you, it's not as hot as I thought it was going to be. My watch says it's 79 degrees. And it's apparently 78 degrees. So it is uh, still rather warm. But now I see it says 77. So go figure. Uh, it's not as hot as we were expecting to be, but it is absolutely wonderful. want to give a shout out, Sonia Robles, happy birthday today. Roto Rob, happy birthday. Thank you for joining us. And uh, again, want to give our likes to All Tower Media, my tocayo, Roger Peacock. Thank you for joining us. So happy birthday, Sonia. Happy birthday, Rob. And the word of the day is Belvedere. Belvedere. A building or architectural feature of a building designed and situated to look out upon a pleasing scene. So this most assuredly is not a Belvedere, but hey, it's all good. Thank you for everyone watching. Let us know who you are and where you hail from. We would love to have you uh, let us know, and we're going to get to it. Of course, our first thing we're going to get to history today, back in June 28, 1969, it is, of course, the beginning sometime after midnight of the Stonewall Riots. This was in New York City. And it's really regarded as one of the first major protests on behalf of equal rights for the LGBTQ community. It was a police raid of the Stonewall Inn, a popular gay club located in New York City's Christopher Street. It turned violent as patrons and local sympathizers began rioting against the authorities. The police were legally justified in raiding the club, which was serving liquor without a license, among other violations. But New York's gay community had grown weary of the police department targeting gay clubs, many of which had already been closed. Soon the crowd began throwing bottles at the police. The protests spilled over into the neighboring streets. And order was not restored until the deployment of New York's riot police sometime after 4 a.m. This is probably the first, or if not one of the first, events for the LGBTQ community. That was on this day in 1969. A tiny footnote. In 2019, the New York Police Department formally apologized for its role in the Stonewall Riots and the discriminatory laws that targeted gay people. Wow, a while ago. Good evening, Josh Jones. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the likes. And General Dalton, thank you. Appreciate it, we already got four. So once again, let us know who you are and where you hail from. For those of you that know and don't know, the same of the day is Irenaeus. In our community realm, we do not have announcements from community news. Remember, we're always soliciting, <clears throat> I mean accepting, so if you want to go to, if you need announcements for community events, you have yard sales, church events, political events, whatever, uh, parties, whatever you want, we will gladly uh, announce them here. You just have to contact us via Twitter or contact us directly on the NDB Media site, which I believe I will activate right now. And there it is, the NDB Media site. Thank you, Josh. Uh, we're getting through there, young man. Uh, I am laboring, but I have a lot of stuff I want to get to, so hopefully we will be able to get to it. And I want to remind everyone that we do have positions available here at NDB Media. We're going to be announcing them shortly. We are looking to get back into the punditry and news reporting that we did years ago, and we are looking to bring attorneys. We are looking to bring financial planners. We are looking to bring in law enforcement, political mavens, scientists, and the like. So, uh, yes, yes. Oh, maybe I should have done this, not this one. But yes, all hail me. Yes, all hail the jefe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to be posting them on our Facebook page, the NDB Media page on Facebook, of the positions that we are looking for because we're going to be 
contacting or we're going to be doing stories as we move forward on Monday Night America. As I mentioned, everyone knows that in 2009 through 2011, we were the industry standard in the world when it came to breaking news. It speaks for itself. Take a look at the time slots. Take a look at the slots that we did on radio programming. You guys remember it. On May 1st, 2011, we broke the news before Fox, CNN, MSNBC, before everyone and anyone. We brought it to you first that SEAL Team 6 had taken out Osama bin Laden. Back in 2011, we were the first ones on air and we called it. As a matter of fact, we were there in March when Fukushima, the nuclear reactor, exploded. We were the first ones on air covering it. We had live reporters there, folks. Before MSNBC, before CNN, before Fox, NDB Media was live and covering it. We did. The proof is in the pudding. No one else can make that claim because we were there reporting it. The episodes are in the archives. They're there. We broke news on natural disasters, political events, earth-shaking and earth-shattering moments. Ever since everyone went to the 24-hour news cycle, well, what else was there to do? Yes, we were the first one there, and we were the first one on air. It was some exciting times, but not long after May 1st, 2011, everything became 24-hour news cycle. And we were just a very small operation. Yes, we were worldwide, but there was only 20 of us. And that's that's a, a sub-office for one of the major networks in one little Stan country. But we are looking to get into some of that reporting once again. And that's why we're going to be putting out, we need engineers, we need professors, attorneys, law enforcement, the like. We're going to be announcing them on the NDB Media website. So, if you're interested, you have a skill, you want to talk about something, we would love to have you on. So, uh, just stay looking out for those. Michael Day, thank you. Thank you for the like. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, let me see. Today, as I mentioned, I went over the Stonewall uh, riots. I want to go over today, daily briefing. You heard the U.S. Olympic team. Women's gymnastics team, Simon Biles and company, are set for Tokyo. Of course, we know the search for survivors are continuing over in Florida. And this is just the start to Monday. There was a lot going on about the devastating uh, condo collapse in Maya Beach, Miami Beach, Miami. And uh, you know that uh, Simone Biles will be joined by Sumisa Lee, Jordan Childs, and Grace McKellum. They will represent the nation at next month's Olympics in Tokyo, which begin in uh, late July, if I'm not mistaken. I'll see if I can find that date. So wanted to get that one in. Uh, Record-baking weather in the Northwest. Wow. They are sizzling big time. So we do have a little bit of political news that we want to get to. Apparently in the state of Wisconsin, it looks like, much to the chagrin of the parties established, you're going to have a community that is going to determine their own congressional districts. Got to get the politicians out of there. They gerrymander everything. And putting it in the hands of citizens, things change for the better. Remember, folks, it's not whether you're Republican. It's not whether you're Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, whatever. It is us against the politicians, always. There's more money out there. But my goal has been education and involvement. If we can hold those individuals, we can hold their feet to the fire, we can restore order and take control. Talking about the politicians. You have to have a smart electorate and a competent electorate. And that's what we try to do here. You know our leanings. We are activists. 
and we try to educate as best we can. And we're going to continue to do so by bringing real people with real opinion and real knowledge and experience. You know the line that irritates me the most is fraud at polls. Everyone that screams it, the first thing I ask him is, have you ever worked as a poll worker? P-O-L-L. Everyone that screams fraud, they've never worked a poll. So as I tell them, I have numerous times for many different agencies. You don't know what happens. You can't play. You have no opinion. You have no say. How can you comment on something that you know nothing about? Work a poll. Then come back and we'll have a conversation. But that is what I'm talking about. I have to fight the stupidity and inanity of people because we are trying to get everything across. And yes, they're saying it's as hot as hell out there, which I believe is middle America. Yes. Yes, it's supposed to be. But in Wisconsin, they're going to have the citizen committees to redo the commissions here. Over here in California, it's the same thing. The citizens control. I volunteered for the first time around. I pulled out because... I didn't want to go through the requirements, but it's real easy to get some of that stuff done. But involve yourselves, folks. Write your leaders letters. Ask them what do they stand for. They will respond to you because no one contacts them. When you do, they respond. So it is something that works for everyone. But folks, here we go. We're going to get into it now. As you know, these are some segments that I love doing and I haven't done them for a while, but these are absolutely fun. Only in America, folks. It's crazy. A New Jersey school district is removing the names of all holidays from the school calendar so as not to offend anyone. The decision came after a raucous public meeting about the board's decision to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Every holiday will now be listed as a day off, so we don't have to have anyone with hurt feelings, explained board member Doreen Roche. Only in America. A Nevada conservative group wants teachers to wear body cameras to ensure they don't teach critical race theory. Not going to discuss race theory right here. Look it up on your own. Find out what it is. Karen England, founder of the Nevada Family Alliance, says she's received reports of teachers contradicting the lessons taught by parents at home, particularly on race, and that body cams would create a record that could be viewed by appropriate parties. Wow. That's crazy. Only in America. The Yale School of Medicine is distancing itself from a lecture it hosted by New York psychiatrist Dr. Aruna Kilanani, in which she said that, quote, white people make my blood boil. And that she's had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person. Oh, God. Only in America. Yale said that her comments are antithetical to the values of the school, but... Kilanani said she had, quote, used provocation as a tool for real engagement. Wow. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate the like. DA, thank you for the like. Luis Noriega, thank you for the like. Appreciate it. Only in America. Officials with an American Le within an American Legion post in Ohio cut a veteran's microphone when he said free black sa slaves organized the first Memorial Day celebration. Lieutenant Colonel Bernard Kempter said he wanted to educate people about the key role blacks played, but event organizer Cindy Sushin said that that portion of the speech was not relevant to our program. Wow. Only in America, folks. Only in America does that happen. But I will tell you, it was a good week for recalculating after U.S. Airlines said they are adding 5 to 10 pounds to the average weight of passengers and their baggage. Kind of, kind of both of them right there. Weight, baggage. <laughs> to avoid the safety risk of overloaded planes. 
It was a good week for moving to the Southern Hemisphere after the Economist Intelligence Unit rated Auckland, New Zealand as the world's most livable city. Not only is Auckland beautiful, the unit said, New Zealand's tough lockdown early in the pandemic enabled residents to, quote, enjoy a lifestyle that looks similar to pre-pandemic life. It was a good week for prioritizing, with Germany's announcement that before it withdraws its 1,100 troops from Afghanistan, it will fly home their huge stockpile of alcohol, more than 60,000 cans of beer, and hundreds of bottles of wine and champagne. It was a good week for penance. After Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tubin, I had talked about this, you know what it is to, to be caught tubing, the legal analyst fired last year by the New Yorker for masturbating during a staff radio call returned to CNN's airwaves with a confession. Not turning off his camera during the call was deeply moronic. Tubin conceded. Yeah, it was a good week for self-parody. After anti-vaccine activist Sherry Tenpenny told Ohio State lawmakers that COVID vac vaccines make people magnetized. I think you guys all saw this one. This was so funny. So that keys and forks stick to their foreheads. Another anti-vaxxer tried to prove it by sticking a key to her face, but it kept calling. It kept falling off. I guess she didn't have a key to that answer. It was a good week for fishing yarns after Cape Cod lobster diver Michael Packard claimed he was swallowed by a humpback whale while swimming underwater. I felt this huge shove, and the next thing I knew, it was completely black, says the modern-day Jonah, who estimates he was in the whale's mouth for 30 to 40 seconds before it spat him out. Yeah, had it taken a bite out of me, it would have spit me out at the moment it tasted it, especially today with how hot it was. I know, DA, got a bit disgusted there. But I want to give another shout-out. Uh, to Mr. Sullivan, thank you for the like. We've already got nine. Thank you, folks. Now, it was also a bad week for Karen, which plunged 171 places in the Social Security Administration's latest annual ranking of popular baby names. Nudie saddled with connotations of white entitlement and a chronic need to speak to the manager, Karen was the chosen name of only 325 babies in 2020, down from more than 33,000 in 1965. Uh, yes, yes indeed, DA, yes indeed. It was a bad week for the monarchy after Oxford University students voted to, make, to take down a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II from a common room because, quote, she represents recent colonial history. The motion to remove her was brought by an American lecturer in computer science. It was a bad week for free snacks after the Food and Drug Administration warned that people with seafood allergies should not eat the crunchy cicadas currently covering the ground in 15 states. Michael, would you agree with that? These insects share a family relation to shrimp, to shrimp and lobsters. Wow. It was a bad week for... Slipping and sliding after NBC executives shut down production of the upcoming action game show Ultimate Slip and Slide amid an outbreak of explosive diarrhea that fell 40 crew members and sent some racing to porta potties. It was a bad week for fear of missing out after Donald Trump sent a wistful message to President Biden before the week's summit with Russian Vladimir Putin. Please give Putin. My warmest regards, Trump said. It was a bad week for congressional experience after Jason Riddle, a New Hampshire man facing criminal charges for storming the Capitol during the January 6th insurrection, announced that he's running for a seat in the House. If you're running for office, Riddle said, any attention is good attention. Well, if you're convicted of doing something, you might not be able to get in. But that's neither here nor there. Good stuff. That was good week, bad week. We already did Only in America. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video on YouTube just the other day that had a U, uh, United States Postal Service individual 
throwing a, their mail package, apparently trying to hit the porch, but she threw it so high it went up on the roof. Wow. Good job. And the USPS truck was right behind her on the street. Classic. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Uh, let me move on to a few other items right here. Though the number of miles Americans drove during the pandemic in 2020 fell 13%, Traffic-related deaths rose 7% to an estimated 38,680. Federal officials blame the increase on drivers speeding on less congested roads or driving while impaired by drugs or alcohol. I agree to this. I've seen it. I drove to and from work. I drove a normal life during the pandemic. And as I commented to someone within the last two hours, the only thing I had to deal with were people that were driving in speeds, in excess of the speed limit. It was crazy. Idiots were driving. Freeways were wide open. They were driving in the carpool lanes. They were driving on the uh, so fast it was ridiculous. But that's all that was happening. Now, since it looks like everything is reopened up, now you have the a-holes back. The people that don't know how to drive, the people that just swerve from lane to lane, don't signal, cut everyone off, Get in front of you, slow down, play with their phones, most likely probably play with themselves as well. And I have to tell you, if you were not working during the COVID or you did not drive to and from work, that's you. You are that shitty driver. I tell you, because during COVID, you were nowhere to be found. And now that you're back, oh my God, traffic is miserable. You, you think you're a good driver. Well, while you sat on your butt, the rest of us had it easy. And now that you're back, everyone who did not drive, it's you. You, you did not drive. And now that you're back, we know you were a COVID person. You stayed at home because you did. And now that you're back, you're screwing it up for the rest of us. Go back home. You guys are worthless drivers, let me tell you. Worth. Less should go back home. Should less let the rest of us uh, just get back to the world because it was ridiculous. It should be noted Donald Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, repeatedly pushed the Justice Department to investigate unfounded claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential election. In late December and early January, Meadows sent Acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen five emails asking for investigations into numerous conspiracy theories including the people in Italy use military technology and satellites to tamper with the U.S. voting machines. The jackassity of this. Folks, again, Meadows has never worked a poll. He can't play. He doesn't know what it is. Let me tell you, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable, folks. Ugh. A single wildfire in California's Sequoia National Park last year destroyed at least a tenth of the world's mature green sequoias, some of which were more than 2,000 years old and over 250 feet tall. I cannot overemphasize how mind-blowing this is for all of us, said forest management expert Christy Brigham, who estimates the loss of 7,500 to 10,000 trees. Since the first COVID-19 vaccine was given to a 90-year-old in Coventry, England, on December 8, 2020, more than 1.7 billion doses have been administered around the globe. It's equivalent to putting a person on the moon, said Cody Meisner, an infectious disease specialist. That's crazy. The worldwide COVID death toll for 2020 has already exceeded that of 2020, largely because of the pandemic spread and intensification in parts of Asia and Latin America. So far this year, the virus has been responsible for nearly 1.9 million deaths. Wow. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and his wife went into hiding after receiving multiple death threats stemming from Raffensperger's refusal to overturn the state's election results. You can't overturn results when they're legal. But I remember these people that are crying now were the ones crying back then in the reverse saying, hey, elections have consequences. Yeah, they do. Folks, don't listen to anyone. Go out and vote. That's what you do. 
All these conspiracies. Hey, in 2016, they were saying the same thing. 2020, exact same thing. What is it for you to do is vote. That's it. You want to know how the system works? Volunteer. Become a poll worker. Then let's have a conversation. Police retirements surged 45% between April 2020 and April 2021, compared with the previous year, according to a survey of 200 police departments. Resignations were up 18%. It's an extremely difficult time to be a police officer, said Maria Haberfield, who trains police officers at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York. Only 1.3% of white Americans are experiencing poverty that goes back three or more generations, a new Brookings Institution study found. Among black Americans, 21.3% are the third generation of their family to be poor. Folks, go to school. Yes, I know, if it were only that easy. The fact is, go to school. It's the best thing you can do. I'm sorry to say, get a second job. Can't call me a hypocrite. You know what I do. Folks, I know it's difficult. I know it is, but it's so much easier to complain. Instead, do something about it. If you believe there was fraud in the polls, go out there, be an observer. Go talk to people. Help your friends vote. Help your neighbors. The conspiracy wing nuts when it comes to voting is pathetic. 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 Take it from someone who has been a poll worker from 1998 to today. I've worked almost every election. I'm proud of it. I volunteer. Am I paid for it? Yes, I am. But I work more hours. So it, it comes with the territory. It's like jury duty. I do it. But I love jury duty, but that's besides the point. And I love being a poll worker as well. They uh, they give me a badge, and, it, and I write my name, Roger, or Rogelio, and it's languages I speak. I always put English, Spanish, and Klingon. And in 20, in March of 2020, when I worked the primary, one or two people would notice that it said Klingon. Because in Calif in L.A. County, we had a new system where everything had gone digital. So I had 32 machines on the floor, which I was responsible for moving up and down. They would signal me when they had someone, and I would they I would direct them to a machine, help them to get it going, and then that was it. They would vote. It was so awesome. I was standing for 12 of 14 hours. It's crazy, but I loved doing it. It's a privilege being able to be a part of this. We're not changing history. We're making history by doing this. And it's awesome. Being able to serve. I, I, it's in my blood. It's in my genes. Volunteer, folks. Volunteer to know what it is. It's awesome. And you really learn a lot about the system. And when you observe the system, you realize there are people just like you that want to make sure the system works. And they're watching out of everyone else. Every time I've worked in a poll, it floors me on how people want to get it right. And then I hear these alcahuetes, these idiots, saying that there's fraud everywhere. They've never worked a poll. They've never volunteered. They've never actually even observed one. They're lies, folks. But you should try doing it. It is fun. It's tiring. It's exhausting. But it is. But in March of 2020, I I had my Star Trek badge on. And I said Klingon. And this, this older lady was walking in to vote. And she had her disabled son. And I'll never forget this. And it was all, he was disabled physically. And there may have been a, a mental impairment was not able to speak but as he was coming by the table i was seated for a moment i was tired and he saw my badge when you know someone wants to say something i felt so bad but i also felt good 
in that he recognized it and he wanted to say something and I wanted to be able to speak to the individual but the individual could say nothing. And I just looked at him and I smiled and he was so excited he his mom was holding on to him he had trouble walking but he saw my badge and he was so excited he he recognized it for what it was there was a young man in Claremont that is unable to speak and yet he recognized Star Trek and it brought him joy wow wow and I witnessed that unbelievable doesn't matter what your opinion on Star Trek is I wore that badge and that person reacted and I'll never ever 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 forget that thank you DVA mechanics and for everyone watching us we have quite a few people watching us right now I thank you thank you thank you and we have some other items that we're gonna be getting to but um, I do have a little bit of wit and wisdom I like that part so I'm gonna put some quotes out here and I'm gonna see if you guys can come up with who uh, said it to live is so settling it leaves little time for anything else to live is so startling it leaves little time for anything else at 50 Everyone has the face he deserves. I think you guys will recognize that one. I have the face that I deserve. One for radio. Remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to the avoid of trap, to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. This person is very recent. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. That's what drives me today, folks, knowing that time is finite. The days ahead of me are fewer than those that I've lived. And I'm driven to do what I do. I am here, a little bit of entertainment, but hopefully I'm sharing information. And maybe you'll get something out of it. That's my hope. But, folks, we win when we are strong and we are smart and we choose to take decisive action. Screw everyone else. When we go out and get what we want and we work for it, things happen and in America they do. And in that I will always be the ultimate cheerleader. There is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in the proportion. There is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in the proportion. You guys know who they are? The first one was Emily Dickinson, quoted in the San Francisco Examiner, when she said, to live is so startling, it leaves little time for anything else. George Orwell quoted in the Frederick County, Maryland News Post. At 50, everyone has the face he deserves. George Orwell, 1984. And this is uh, 2021. Steve Jobs quoted in CNN.com. Remembering that you're going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. Do you know why in the time of Steve Jobs there were no off switches or off buttons because of Steve's job's thinking it didn't want it to end I'm paraphrasing but think of the Apple products that you know they don't have off buttons and then finally the last one was philosopher Francis Bacon quoted again in the San Francisco Examiner there is no excellent beauty that hath not some strangeness in the proportion wow that amazing really good stuff the star trek news don't know if you guys have seen it star trek picard dropped their new teaser trailer 
Eh, it's about a week or two weeks old, but we hadn't reported on it. So check it out. Don't know if you guys have the former CBS All Access, now known as Paramount+. Plus. They have 11 of the 13 Star Trek movies available for viewing. Yep. All of the original series, all of the next generation. They don't have the 2009 Star Trek and the 2013 Star Trek, the grammatically incorrect Star Trek in the Darkness, but they do have the 2016 Star Trek Beyond. So they are available. So uh, Josh says that he is so excited for Picard Season 2. Folks, maybe we can do a program on Picard Season 2. Who knows? We'll, we might go back to doing a weekly Star Trek program right after the episode. So we'll we'll have to talk about that. Also, Star Trek Discovery Season 4 is on track to air in the fall of 2021. I do not have news on Star Trek Below Decks. Fan favorite. Uh, I know it's not for everyone, but I have to tell you that I did terribly enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. Watching this program with my daughter and watching Discovery... Can't wait for Orville, man. I don't have news on Orville, but the third season is in the works. That's all I have. I don't have anything new. I was going to show off my new toys, the Eagle Moss. I have a Klingon uh, Bird of Prey, I believe, or Scout Ship, not the Bird of Prey. And I also have the USS Pasteur. I received, actually, I've received four of those. Oh, my goodness. There it is. We'll do it. So we'll have to see what we'll do it on a Thursday or a Friday because that's when the episodes usually break. So, yes, it looks like there may be a Star Trek wrap. It might be there, Star Trek wrap. So we'll see. So I do have a little bit more of entertainment news, but if anyone wants to join me, folks, just let me know. Go ahead and do so. I'll send you the invite. I've got it ready to go. I'll just have to send you the message. I didn't post it in our NDB Media homepage. I apologize. But if you guys want to join, let's do it. Yeah, Richard, I just saw this. Thank you. Yeah. I know girls that work a poll. Good for you. Altara Media said, sadly, too many people rely on social media over actual media. And the problem is that media themselves have turned to social media style reporting and clickbait tactics. Not all media outlets, just many. I would agree humbly. Yes. Yes. So, I don't know if you know. But it looks like James Corden, the host of The Late Late Show on CBS, has to adjust Spill Your Guts segment following a backlash. Believe it or not, due to insensitivity backlash. Can't believe it. James Corden is responding to backlash surrounding one of his show's popular segments, which has been accused of mocking Asian foods. The Late Late Show host confirmed he will be adjusting Spill Your Guts segment in which celebrities are forced to choose between answering a tough question and eating something unusual following a change.org petition calling to remove the bit. The petition created by TikTok user Kim Syra garnered over 45,000 signatures and said food cordon used like chicken feet or fertilized egg dish known as balut are not disgusting foods and are regularly eaten by Asian people. The foods that are presented are meant to be gross as they're supposed to encourage the guest to answer his questions instead. However, many of the foods that he presents to his guests are actually from different Asian cultures. Syra wrote in the description of the petition in response to the controversy, Gordon said, Gordon said he wouldn't completely remove the segment, but would rather update the foods used. Hell yeah. There are a lot of ones that you can pick on. So Josh, if you want to start doing the Star Trek program now, and we can go back and catch up. I would be down for that. Maybe doing two or three episodes, a segment. Let me know. Uh, we, we can start that. Because remember, from January to April, I'm I'm a tad busy. So Mr. Corden is uh, screwed on that one. And it uh, looks like he's going to be making changes. So, all right. Good job, sir. And we'll see what else is going to happen. Remember the Disney Channel? Allison Mack? You've heard, apparently she apologizes for her role in MXIVM sex cult case, her biggest mistake days before her sentencing. Of course you're going to say that. But it's sad and disappointing. Days before Allison Mack is scheduled to be sentenced for her role in the MXIVM sex cult, the former Smallville actress issued an apology. 
in a letter obtained by the Hollywood Reporter and Variety addressed to those who have been harmed by my actions, Mac, who's now 38, expressed regret for her actions and reflected on the opportunity of her house arrest to confront the darkest parts of myself and come to terms with the pain my actions have inflicted on so many people I love. It is now of paramount importance for me to say from the bottom of my heart, I am so sorry. I threw myself into the teachings of Keith Renair with everything I had. I believe wholeheartedly that his mentorship was leading me to a better, more enlightened version of myself. I devoted my loyalty, my resources, and ultimately my life to him. This was the biggest mistake and greatest regret of my life. She was sentenced last October to 100... Oh, Rainier was sentenced last October to 120 years in prison for his role in leading the criminal enterprise. In, uh, that included a cult-like sorority where women were sexually exploited and branded with his initials. In 2019, Max signed a plea agreement in Brooklyn Federal Court admitting to racketeering crimes in her role as a high-ranking leader in subgroup DOS that put her behind bars for years. Wow. The former actress is expected in court Wednesday for sentencing. According to the Hollywood Report and Variety, her legal team is asking for no jail time, given Mac has recognized her wrongdoings and publicly denounced Rainier. Wow. We're going to see what's going to happen. Josh Jones says, I would say it's unusual or disgusting to people who are not familiar with the food. It doesn't mean it's hurtful or racist or whatever. It's just a large section of people who are not familiar with it or comfortable eating it. I don't eat and I will not eat cow stomach. Oh, yes. That is popular. Popular. See, I was about to. Okay, I'm going to admit it. I do. Oh, my goodness. What's it called? I do not slur my speech. Well, you've heard me, but I do stutter. And when I elongate my words, it's my way of controlling that stutter. And when I, when words like that in my mind, I'm trying to elongate it and they will come out a bit differently. So there you go. Yes, in Latin America, in many parts south of here, or south of here that way, because that's, I'm pointing at DA right now. And now I'm pointing at Josh with my thumb. He's over in that direction. But that way, it is, they have things that, I wouldn't eat, and I find it abhorrently disgusting. Not just disgusting, but abhorrently. Abhorrently. Rats in Central and South America are a delicacy. In the Philippines, we uh, and in several Asian countries, dogs. I believe in Vietnam and the Philippines. That's anathema for some of us here, but over there, it's, it's a big deal. And in other places, they, uh, yeah, Anthony Bourdain and the other gentleman from the Travel Channel, Zimmerman, I believe. Man, the stuff and places where they went, wow. It was something. We got another like. Adrian Jones, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're up to 10. We appreciate that. And uh, Josh says, these apologies days before sentencing, sentencing, like so many criminals do, are pointless, and I'm sure the judge can see right through them. I don't know if the judge is going to sentence them or a jury, but yeah, same thing. Uh, Adrian Jones says, Scrapple. Scrapple. Hmm. All right. I like it. I like it. So, folks, we have quite a few people in the chat room. We thank you. Uh, let us know who you are and where you hail from. We'd like to know. And as I said, if anyone wants to join me tonight, we're doing very well. And I have a new, let's see. I don't really want to get into an item that I... Oh, sorry. I have a little bit more of entertainment news. I have two more items that I wanted to get to. Forgive me. Uh, I, we did James Corden, Allison Mack, and Marilyn Manson. Don't know if you guys caught this one, but Marilyn Manson is to turn themselves... Oh! LOL. It's a food that most people won't eat once they find out what it is. Please, Adrian, what is it? Let me know. Police expect Marilyn Manson to turn himself into authorities on the assault charges. I'm in a huge oven. All right. I appreciate that. Sorry, only listening. Hmm. All right. Well, 
<laughs> That's fair. You let us know where you are. Marilyn Manson is expected to turn himself into the Los Angeles Police Department. Manson, whose real name is Brian Warner, has a warrant out for his arrest in Guilford, New Hampshire, and faces two counts of Class A misdemeanor simple assault. Manson's lawyers have reached out have reached an agreement for the musician to turn his mouth into Los Angeles authorities to face the warrant. Guilford Police Chief Tony Bean Burpee, in a statement to USA Today, said his department's prosecutor will forward the warrant to the LAPD detective, who will then arrange a specific date and time for Manson to turn himself in. We've been in a holding pattern, Burpee said in a statement. We are simply looking for Mr. Warner to turn himself in on the act of warrant so that we can proceed. Wow. Police say even though Manson is expected to be booked and processed by the LAPD, he will be issued a court date with the New Hampshire District Court. Quote, if Mr. Warner turns himself in within the next few weeks, his initial appearance arraignment will likely be scheduled for mid-August. According to law enforcement, Manson was performing at the Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion, a local outdoor amphitheater on August 18, 2019, when the assaults allegedly occurred. The alleged assaults, which authorities say were not sexual in nature, and I was mistaken, I told someone that they were. I apologize. And again, these are accusations. Involved a videographer in the stage pit who was subcontracted to film the show. Initially, Manson's attorney, Howard Keene, called the Guilford Police Department's claim ludicrous in a May statement to USA Today, but added that he and his client remain committed to cooperating with authorities, as we have done throughout. In addition to these charges, the embattled musician has been accused of assault by multiple women, including his ex-fiancee, Evan Rachel Wood, and the Game of Thrones actress, Esme Bianco. In April, Bianco filed a lawsuit accusing Manson of sexual assault, sexual battery, and human trafficking. And in February, Westwood star Wood alleged Manson horrifically abused her for years. Wow. Wow. Adrian Jones says, I'll explain some time, LOL, but it's basically a pig. Well, everything that isn't used in hot dogs. Okay, fair enough. Scrapple. Okay, I guess I can see that. And I, I think I may know what it is, which is rather popular in the Latin world as well. So I have one more item in the entertainment news. Little, little on the bad side. But so far, the passengers of famous people that we know this year. Johnny Solinger, DMX, Ned Beatty, those are just a few. Uh, former Skid Row singer, Skid Row singer Johnny Solinger died June 26, a month after revealing he was suffering from liver failure. His wife, Paula Marcenaro Solinger, confirmed his death to USA Today. He was 55, was the hard rock band's longest running vocalist from 1999 to 2015, replacing Sebastian Bach who left the group in 96. He embarked on a solo career after parting ways with the band. Prognosis is not so good, he wrote on Facebook in May, sharing his health struggles with fans. As with most musicians, I do not have health insurance, and it's very difficult to get proper care without it. Joanne Linville, you may know her as probably the first female captain in Star Trek, and it doesn't matter if she... Uh, was Romulan. You may recognize her here. Uh, that's her, Joanne Linville. I was stunned that she passed away. I was... I received producer credit for the uh, web program, audio program, Starship Excelsior. And I helped to take individuals to and from the recording studio. And one of them was Joanne Linville. It's a beautiful soul, a feisty woman, and I met her in late 2015, early 2016, due to James Haney and his production of the 50th anniversary episode that they did on Starship Excelsior, which I was graciously given uh, associate producer credit. I met, I met this beautiful woman, Joanne Linville who made a memorable Star Trek appearance as a Romulan commander in the original series. She died June 20th in Los Angeles at age 93. 
In a statement to USA Today, her family said Linville lived a full life, one whose spirit, passion for art and life was an inspiration to all who had the pleasure of knowing her. A loving mother and proud grandmother. Linville was a frequent, t frequent TV guest star and film actor through the 1950s through the 1980s with roles in more than 100 shows and movies. An incredibly beautiful woman. Uh, terribly amazing. And I had the privilege of driving her home from the program that day. John Paragon, best known for his role as John B. the Genie on 1980s children's show Pee Wee's Playhouse, has died at age 66 on April 3rd of heart disease and chronic alcohol abuse at his home in Palm Springs. Uh, you also know Frank Bonner, who played brash salesman Herb Tarlick on the TV comedy WKPR in Cincinnati, died Wednesday from complications of Louis Bodie dementia. His daughter, Desiree Boers, court confirmed he was 79. Janet Malcolm, the inquisitive and boldly speculative author and reporter known for her challenging critiques of everything from murder cases and art to journalism itself, died at 86 on Thursday. Or it was confirmed on Thursday. Well, it's good to know. I'm not going to ask for a hot dog at your wiener schnitzel. Lisa Baines from Gone Girl died Monday, 10 days after being injured in a hit-and-run accident while crossing the street in New York City. Baines appeared in numerous television shows and movies, including Gone Girl in 2014 and Cocktail with Tom Cruise in 1988. On television, she had roles in Nashville, Madam Secretary, Masters of Sex, and NCIS. She also acted on stage regularly, including Broadway appearances in the Neil Simon play Rumors in 1988, in the musical High Society in 1998, and in the Noel Coward play Present Her Laughter in 2010. Bologna is just hot dog pancakes. Do you remember that? Ned Beatty, as you know, passed away on June 3rd at age 83 of natural causes. He died in Los Angeles, home surrounded by his family and loved ones, his manager Deborah Miller said. The actor broke into movies with 1972's Deliverance, starred as TV executive Arthur Jensen and Network, which earned the actor his only Oscar nomination. I've seen that one. Beatty portrayed the bumbling henchman Otis in 1978's Superman. He was in Superman 2, very little, but he was in it. And he uh, voiced the villainous bear Lotso in Toy Story 3 and the mayor in Rango. In the fan favorite sports movie Rudy, BD played the father of Notre Dame walk on Rudy Rudiger. The Mod Squad actor Clarence Williams III died June 4th of complications from colon cancer. Williams starred as undercover detective Lincoln Lick Hayes from 1968 to 1973 on the ABC drama alongside Peggy Lipton. I probably should go back to this. You'll see him right there on the right. Uh, Williams portrayed Prince's father in 1984, Purple Rain. Richard Robinson, who was a longtime head of Scholastic Inc., presided over such bestsellers as J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter novels and Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games series, along with a wide range of educational materials, reading clubs, and book fairs, has died. He was 84. He passed away on Saturday. Robert Hogan, veteran TV and stage actor who appeared in shows ranging from All My Children to The Wire in a career spanning six decades, died May 27th at his coastal Bain home, his family announced in the New York Times. The cause of death was complications from pneumonia. He was 87. I remember him. I remember him from All My Children. Romy Walthall, who appeared as Sean Archer's John Travolta, anxious secretary, 1997's Face Off, and as trapped Molly McNulty in the 1989 horror film The House of Usher, died May 18th at age 57 after experiencing sudden cardiac arrest. Wow. She was in The Howling 4, Howling New Moon Rising, 
and had significant arcs in a number of 1990s era TV series. Lil Loaded, the Dallas rapper behind the 2019 viral summer hit 6 Locks 6A 6Y, died at age 20, the Dallas Medical Examiner's Office confirmed, May 31st. A week prior to the death of the young rapper, his legal name was Deshaun Robertson. His song was certified gold by the Recording Industry of America, after which the rapper dubbed his listeners the dopest fan base on earth. B.J. Thomas, the versatile Grammy-winning singer who scored hits on pop, country, and gospel charts, died May 9th at age 78 after a battle with lung cancer. His many successes included Hooked on a Feeling, I Just Can't Help Believing, and Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. From Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Robert Redford wasn't big on the latter hit 1969 hit. When the film released, I was highly critical. How did that song hit with the, fit with the film? There was no rain, Redford told the USA Today in a 29th statement. At the time, it seemed like a dumb idea. How wrong I was, as it turned out to be a giant hit. Gavin McLeod, known for his TV stardom and shows like the Maritime Little Moore Show and Love Boat, passed away at 90. Wow. Kay Lehusen, a pilot pioneer and LGBTQ rights activist who chronicled the movement's early days through her photography and writing has died. She was 91. Known as the first openly gay U.S. photojournalist, Nahushin died, and I apologize for the pronunciation, at Chester County Hospital outside Philadelphia following a brief illness. As I mentioned earlier in the program about the 1969 Stonewall Uprising, she advocated for civil gay civil rights before that and she helped launch the modern LGBTQ area. She captured widely published images of some of the nation's first protests. Samuel E. Wright, two-time Tony Award winner, died May 24th at age 74 after a three-year battle with cancer. Wow. Best known for voicing Sebastian the Crab in Disney's 1989 animated musical Little Mermaid, in which he memorably sang lead vocals in the Oscar-winning song Under the Sea. Wright also played Mufasa in the original cast of Broadway's The Lion King, for which he was nominated for the Best Featured Actor in a Musical at the 1998 Tony Awards. Wow. So there it is, folks. Uh, we covered quite a bit today. Uh, there's some other table uh, information, which I'm probably leaving on the table, but done well. I enjoy the fact that we've got a lot of stuff in. Following our calendar events, um, on Blog Talk Radio Channel tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, Fandom Access at four. All times are Pacific. At 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, uh, next week there's nothing on Wednesday. Oh no, I believe Travel Talk Radio will be on at 4 p.m. Uh, hosted by Steve Nisal. On Thursday at 5 p.m. Travel Itch Radio, and then on Saturday right here video sports talk with the guys at 7 p.m dax machina and uh we don't know on july 4th it is a chip a jedi dot tax night i probably will have a program but i, I don't this is july 4th this place is probably going to be ringing so i don't know uh at 5 30 p.m on blog talk radio the walking dead hosted by casey shapiro will be on so that's what we have going on this upcoming week so check it out. Our calendar will be posted. And, uh, yeah, I did mention John McAfee. I, I should have. I have McAfee in there, but I just didn't get to it as I was running out of time. But uh, I believe I can tentatively say that there's no, there's two programs in the works. One called Spoiler Cast from All Tower Media. It may start in the month of July. We don't know. It's going to be on every other week. And possibly Josh Jones and I and maybe a few others. We'll be doing a Star Trek wrap. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, it looks like it's going to happen. But for now, I want to remind everyone, folks, thank you for spending time with us. Control your destiny. Don't let anyone else fight for what's yours. Don't give in. Don't let anything pass. Take it. It's yours. And always, the Nightmare Hunter will be on next Monday. So for now, folks, good hunting. Peace!